This is the Fury of Dracula Digital Vision stream for uh, Tabletop Fest here on Steam. Uh, we're going to be playing some Fury of Dracula Digital Edition uh, with Kenneth Hyde. Uh Kenneth, do you want to introduce yourself? Or? Um, yeah, I'm uh, Kenneth Hyde. I'm a role-playing game designer and writer uh, in the vampire universe. Mm -hmm. I designed the... Uh, Vampire Spy Thriller Knights Black Agents and uh, the fifth edition of Vampire the Masquerade. I was lead designer on that. And for Knights Black Agents, I co authored with Gareth Hanrahan the Dracula Dossier, which is uh, a improvisational collaborative mega campaign in which you, the player characters, uh, discover that uh, the novel Dracula was a disinformation op by British intelligence to cover up their failed attempt to recruit a vampire. And uh, you discover that said vampire, Dracula, is still around and that they've tried to recruit him again, which can only end in disaster and tears, a great deal of blood. So you have to dodge MI6 while hunting and killing Dracula. That's sort of the, the, the job of the campaign. But you, as the players, pick your clues out of the unredacted version of the novel Dracula, which Gareth and I uh, expanded the novel by 25% to reinsert all the sources and methods and the other stuff that uh, British intelligence took out uh, and then larded the thing with footnotes uh, for clue uh, triggers so that when you follow them uh, that leads you to a mysterious person or a location or a, uh, an organization or you find a weird artifact uh, whatever it is uh, you and the uh, game master are sort of creating the story together because you're saying this is an interesting book and the GM is saying well by not coincidence that hook can apply to anything in the campaign because here it is that's how they've set it up <laughs> yeah, so no I'm two sessions of the Dracula dossier are the, or no two campaigns are the same mm. Uh, the same group could play it twice in a row and get an entirely different story out of it, yeah. just based on what they wanted to do at the time. So that was that was a great deal of work and a great deal of fun, and I think Gareth and I uh, did a pretty good job with that. Um, yeah. So uh, along with that, I also wrote a book called The Thrill of Dracula, which is about uh, Dracula as a, uh, a story connect uh, made up of a conjuries of, of myth themes and story elements and how those elements get used by the novel and by the play and by the movies and by the radio show and by all the sort of many, many different versions of Dracula uh, and how you can sort of take comfort from that and then you can plug and play your own version of Dracula at the tabletop. So that's sort of, you know, look, Hammer Films did it, you can do it, sort of an attitude. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so today we're just going to play some Fury of Dracula. Uh, I'll be playing it, um, so I can show you what we've done with the digital version, um, and we can just chat about Dracula as we play, and talk about things as they come up, um, but basically use this as some nice uh, background stuff for us to talk about while we just chat about how awesome Dracula is. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, so, for anyone who hasn't played Fury of Dracula before, uh, it's a game in which four hunters uh, it's Lord Godalming uh, John Seward Mina Harker and Van Helsing uh, all have to hunt down Dracula before he takes over all of Europe so this is uh, after the original novel um, Dracula's come back uh, and is ready to have his revenge he's not very happy about what happened in the novel uh, hence the fury of Dracula yeah um, so, in our digital version, uh, if you're playing locally, you can choose whether or not the hunters are played by the AI and you play as Dracula, or you can play as the hunters uh, and have the AI play as Dracula. Right. So, you can choose whether you want to do the hunting or be one of the hunters. Should be an armadillo that crawls across the board right about now. <laughs> All right. So again, for anyone that's not played uh, Fury of Dracula before, uh, so it's set in Europe. 
uh, and the core concept of the game is that you, as either the Hunters or Dracula, uh, need to roam around Europe, uh, if you're the Hunters, and try and stop Dracula uh, before he takes over uh, all of Europe. Uh, if you're Dracula, you just need to hide, get away, you don't want the Hunters interfering with your plans, um, so staying away from them is the best idea. So, as you can see, uh, the Hunters have put themselves down. Uh, they're really uh, going for North Europe at this point, whereas Mina Hark is all the way over in Greece. So, I get to choose where I want to start, which is always nice. Uh, so, I'm going to start over in Lisbon, Cadets. I'll start in Lisbon. Yeah, so... In terms of uh, thinking about Dracula, like, after the novel uh, has come out, so this is set uh, after the events of the novel, Dracula's returned, and it's up to the four hunters uh, to chase him down. So in terms of taking that concept of Dracula returns, um, how do you feel about the way that Fury of Dracula's doing it as in it's known to the four hunters that Dracula's come back I'm like okay we've seen all the stuff that Dracula got up to in the original novel we can't have him coming back again we need to sort him out yeah I mean the, the, the novel almost sort of implies that that happens mm. I mean not that that happens the novel's very clear that Dracula's dead and uh, no fooling but when they have their little reunion the, the the last the epilogue of the novel where Mina is writing that you know four years later uh, we met again and um, uh, Van Helsing dandled little baby Quincy Harker on his knee and and this some of that is a little bit of oh we're just you know getting together like buddies but some of it is very much the we're getting the band back together yeah uh, uh, energy to it um, I always figured this is Dracula's uh, brides. Uh, didn't get on screen killed. I mean, Van Helsing comes out of the castle and says, oh no, I took care of it. Yeah. And first of all, I believe that when I see it. But second of all, Van Helsing was really on the edge by that point. I mean, they'd been doing their witchcraft and uh, messing with them on the circle. And we're supposed to believe that Van Helsing just wanders off by himself and takes care of the brides or that yeah. the brides don't have backup coffins. So I always figured it's not Dracula that's the the big threat it's it's the brides and they're basically trying to find you know whoever the second ranking vampire in europe is and saying guess what chief you're promoted yeah get to work <laughs> you know they're they're going to, to vampire city in france or they're going to um uh you know carmilla's house in austria and saying okay here we go yeah you get off the sidelines or elizabeth bathory digging her out of <laughs> sashina castle there in in slovakia yeah. So that's sort of my head canon for what that meeting is about. Although obviously in Dracula dossier, Dracula did in fact come back because, you know, as we all know, as has been said uh, endlessly, he doesn't die in the novel the way that Van Helsing says the only way he can die, right? He yeah, dies exactly. with a knife in his chest, not a not a wooden stake. So the fact that he's beheaded by a kukri may not be controlling. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so that he, he can turn into dust. They do it at exactly sundown. He's controlled that valley in Transylvania for 400 years. We think maybe he doesn't have a spare coffin just sort of squirreled away somewhere. <laughs> Plus, we're we're told in the novel that he was a great tactical genius. Exactly. Uh, uh, whether or not he's Vlad Tepesh, the Vlad the Impaler, is a, a different question, and one I'm sure we can get to if we want to, but... The novel, you know, straight up says, nope, he was he was always about the sneak attack and the surprise retreat mm -hmm. that what turned out not to be a retreat. Well, that's that's obviously setting up a, a fake out, you know, a, a, a double retreat situation. Yeah, for sure. And again, if you can, you know, live for 100 years uh, and just come back and kill all your enemies when they're in their in the old folks home. <laughs> I mean, that's uh, that that's just smart. There was a. There was a uh, script for a sequel to Dracula that was never made. Really? Uh, the script was written by, uh, or the treatment for it was written by the occultist Manly Wade Wellman. Mm. And in that script, uh, there's a line where Dracula's in Argentina, uh, where we know, you know, Quincy Morris used to hang out from the novel. 
and um, a, a very old uh, retainer, you know, a very old Renfield comes up to him and says, um, Van Helsing is dead, master. And he like sits right up and he's like, okay, to, well, back to business. <laughs> he's like, oh, Just, that was a nice little holiday. Just took a little mm, break. Now we can get back to it. <laughs> and then I think there's another line in one of the movies where, where Dracula says, um, uh, uh, I will wait a hundred years and kill your whole family. There's nothing you can do. Mm. Little, little stop me. I mean, I, I like the notion that Dracula's got, you know, a bolt hole, a second plan. Again, it's certainly not what Stoker intended. Um, although he did cut out the volcano for some reason. <laughs> yeah, I think that's, that's another thing that, like, makes Dracula so terrifying as a concept. Because you can't just say, oh, well, even if we don't deal with him, it's only a matter of time before natural causes or some kind of horrible accident might take him out for us. But no, no. No. He's he's sticking around. He's a force of nature. He is the horrible accident. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I uh, first read the novel, it was mm. actually a little bit late. I was I, w- I only read it in college, mm. and it was like my freshman year in college, and I was uh, in the dorm. My roommate had gone back home uh, for you know the weekend or whatever, and I was alone in the dorm room. I had my copy of Dracula, and I'm reading it, and it's late at night. And I'm, well, I'm going to stay up and make sure that Dracula is dead. <laughs> and the copy I got, I bought at a used bookstore mm. and I had not checked to see that all the pages were in it. Oh my God. So when I get to literally the last two pages of Dracula, they've been torn out. So they're having the big confrontation. They've yep. got him, you know, they, they've uh, gotten past the uh, his servants and, and uh, they're heading for the big fight. And then no pages are left. <laughs> and I got up as early as I could the next morning and ran down to the campus bookstore and bought another copy of Dracula just to be a thousand percent sure that Dracula died at the end of the book because I was very invested by that time wow. in making sure that he was not coming back. Yeah. And then of course, you know, smash cut to me in 2016, making him come back four times. <laughs> so now you got to think like, why would someone tear out those last two pages, right? Yeah, that was that was a super good troll whoever yeah. owned that book before. <laughs> well, someone sitting there with two pages of Dracula just being like, well, if I can keep these two pages, I can keep reminding myself that he's not coming back. <laughs> That's right. They they used it as a phylactery, wrapped it around, <laughs> put it in their in their necklace. Yeah. I assume they were just rolling a joint and needed two pieces of skinny paper, but. I mean, that's, that's the more likely explanation. But you can't rule that out either, I guess. Explanation? <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's wild. Okay, so for anyone that's been uh, watching what's been happening in the game while we've been chatting about Dracula, uh, so we've been... Uh, well, I've been trying to evade the hunters uh, as they scour Europe for my trail. So as I've been going to new locations, uh, I've been putting down uh, cards on the trail uh, to mark where I've been. So if any of the hunters find these locations, uh, then they'll know. Uh, For example, if they search in Santander, uh, they'll know that two turns ago now, I was in Santander. So it's all about the hunters trying to find my trail. All right, we know he was here three days ago. Where could he possibly be from right. here? Where's it's, Where's the draw the circle on the map? How How many exactly? How many like, cities can he have moved by that time? Yeah. So it's all about um, positioning the hunters so so that you're evaluating all the options in that circle. You know, if it's quite a wide circle, you can say, okay, well, at least we know he's not going to be in Constanta or right. Sophia. Like, there's no the, way he could get there in that d- time. Does, does the game do that calculation for you? Like, you pulled that Santander card, and you're assuming that you're a live player, not a computer mm-hmm. player. If, if Is there a way you pull that card, and it shows you all the cities that he could have gotten to? Uh, no, we, we leave that up to the player. Um, we leave that up to the player to evaluate yeah. because there's so many different ways that he could go um, mm. and because we want to focus a lot on the uh, hunter 
uh, element of it. I think having mm-hmm. the computer calculate it for you would kind of take away some of that magic. Right. So, now that I've moved to Bordeaux, uh, currently, all the hunters seem to be uh, really fixated on... On the Baltic. Yeah, they're really uh, narrowing that down. Uh, however, Mina is kind of moving in this direction. Mm-hmm. So I kind of don't want her to uh, discover. We also have the uh, vampire... Um, what's it called? It's the... There's a pin that the hunters can put down that shows where they think Dracula is. So right. at the moment, uh, they are really focused up on uh, the UK. Well, so in fairness, um, who's going to look for uh, a guy who never drinks wine in Bordeaux? <laughs> that is true. That is true. I was talking about how, um, you know, if you want to take Dracula or the concept of Dracula, you can take it in so many ways. Do you think that's why, like, vampires and Dracula do have such a strong presence in games? Like, all types of games, like video games, board games, tabletop, like... I think that's why the vampire fiction has endured so much in that area? I think that's a big part of it. I mean, I think it's, it's kind of a fun combination because on the one hand, it's a very straightforward symbol and everyone knows what it means. Yeah. Right? It means sexual violence and death and disease. And mm. everyone knows that. Yeah. And it's very specific code, right? The, the fang marks in the neck, and the crosses and the holy water. And it's a very specific mythology. But then you could always, you know, it's like game design, right? You can do it rather than exceptions-based game design. You do exceptions-based vampire. Mm. It's always like, oh, it's Dracula, but he doesn't mind crosses or it's Dracula, but he's actually a romantic figure, not a violent rapist, you know, and that's where you get your Francis Ford Coppola Dracula Mm -hmm. or he's Dracula, but, or he's a vampire, but, and it's those exceptions that begin to sort of make little fractal Draculas around your main Dracula. And you combine that with a novel that like you say, you can read from so many different directions and suddenly what is a seemingly very uncompromising, very plain, very, I don't want to say ordinary, but very straightforward symbol becomes a symbol that means a zillion things, hmm. right? And, and so you can have a thing like um, uh, the, the Guy Madden's film of the ballet of Dracula where Dracula's cast as a Chinese man because he's the symbol of, you know, the, the terrifying East. Yep, uh, but you can also have, you know, Nosferatu where uh, he's uh, sort of an anti-Semitic symbol, or you can have another Dracula where he's he's just a big old teddy bear. He's just you know um, uh, George Hamilton. Yeah, he's, he's just a poor, you know, stood guy who just right? wants to have fun with everyone. Like. And um, and then you can say no, we're really amping up the sex, and he's super sexy Dracula. And mm-hmm. since we love sex, therefore Dracula's a, a figure of liberation and freedom to people. Or you can um, uh, uh, make Dracula. Uh, you know, sort of a, a, a Victorian hero in the way that Fred Saberhagen does in the in the Dracula tapes, where he's, he, he reads the whole novel backwards and says, well, I was trying to save Lucy Westerner on. These idiots are killing her with this stupid uh, tra- blood transfusion that yeah. uh, that isn't going to work. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm desperately trying to keep her alive. And after they've murdered her with the blood transfusion, of course, I had to turn her into a vampire to keep her alive. And I mean, and you can read Dracula that way as this sort of not Byronic rebel because it's the '70s, but this sort of '70s bachelor pad rebel uh, <laughs> that Saberhagen's Dracula is. Yeah. And and uh, and obviously, you know, vampires have been, you know, sexy and misunderstood at least going back to Lefanu's Carmilla. Mm. I mean, sure. obviously, the first vampires were just horrible plague victims or something. Yeah. Um, no, but like, when you oh, read no. the. You're, you're a vampire, that means that we're totally fine to send you out of our village, never have to look at you again, but it's okay because you're a vampire. Yep, yep. So, for anyone that's been following the game uh, while we've been chatting away about Dracula, uh, at the moment, so, I've got these six cards at the top here that represent the trail uh, mm-hmm. that I've been leaving across Europe. At the moment, they know that six turns ago, I was in Clermont-Ferrand. 
so they know for a fact that I was there six turns ago. They don't know anything more than that, but they know that for a fact. So they've got five more locations on the trail that they need to find. At the moment, all of their thoughts are like, well, at least we know he's in Claremont for end. <laughs> so we currently have these three coming up uh, from Spain. Van Helsing is all in here on his lonesome. So, my plan of going through Europe has kind of worked. Kind of a little bit. But I think they're starting to uh, get an idea of where I am. So, Dracula can go by the sea uh, if I want to make a daring escape. But he will take damage by doing so. I don't know if it's the salt water taken out of him. Um, but he will take damage if I go on the sea. So I can either make a beeline uh, towards Castle Dracula, sort of slip past Van Helsing here, or I can go down to Italy and then just jump in the sea and try and make an escape. It depends on if I think that if they discover my trail, then it's probably more advantageous to me to go down to Italy, because then I can just jump in the sea, make an escape, touch down somewhere where I can start anew, or if I think I can slip past Van Helsing, then it makes more sense to stay on land, go towards Castle Dracula, and then I can always escape uh, from Greece if I need to. Now, uh, your victory condition mm -hmm. is not just to elude the hunters for X number of turns, is it? It's to... Or is it? So there's a number of different ways that, that the main victory condition for Dracula is to get his influence to 13. Right. Uh, so as soon as he gets his influence to 13, doesn't matter what's happening in the game, uh, Dracula just immediately wins. Right. And, uh, and, and, your, and your influence is currently what? Hmm? What's your influence currently uh, as Dracula? My influence is currently a grand total of zero. <laughs> Dracula is uh, not spread Dracula's been English distracted English. by literary conversation. It's his <laughs> other weakness, besides exactly. the cross. <laughs> I'm being too distracted and Dracula can't uh, sink his fangs into Europe properly. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a number of different ways that Dracula can increase influence. Uh, anytime he defeats a hunter, uh, his influence will go up. Uh, anytime that I manage to mature a vampire, so as I was talking about before, I'm going through each location, putting down these encounters for the hunters. Right. And put down vampires if those vampires mature. That makes my influence go up. So if they don't yep. find them yep. by the uh, sixth turn, those vampires grow up big and strong. Uh, they can then go out into the world and spread the good word of uh, Dracula. Exactly. Uh, and also, if the hunters don't find me uh, before three weeks pass uh, so the Dracula uh, time token that we've got here uh, for each week that goes a despair right. token gets put on mm. uh, and the despair tokens have a number of different effects, they increase my influence um, when I defeat hunters, so as time goes on Dracula's getting stronger and stronger right. and the despair that the hunters are feeling is growing uh, much like Charlie in uh, Apocalypse Now Exactly. <laughs> so, Have you read, um, speaking of Apocalypse Now, mm -hmm. and honest to God, I did not mean to do this segue, but when I said it, I it. realized. Have you read Kim Newman's uh, Francis Ford Coppola's uh, Dracula, uh, which is a story in the Anno Dracula universe? Do you know the Anno Dracula universe? Nope. Go, it's go an for alternate it. history in which uh, Dracula wins oh, in okay. London. He, he, he defeats the hunters, yep. uh, vampirizes Queen Victoria, becomes the prince consort of England, mm -hmm. and rules England. And then at the tail end of the novel, he's, he's kicked out of England, but he still has a lot of influence, and there's vampires everywhere. Yep. And in, um, uh, uh, the, in Romania, though, Ceausescu is very anti-vampire. And so he wants... Uh, he's willing to make a movie, a propaganda movie, mm. about uh, an alternate universe in which the hunters killed Dracula. Uh, okay. And so Francis Ford Coppola goes to Transylvania to make a movie that is a combination of Dracula 
and Apocalypse Now about <laughs> the band of hunters going up the river to kill Dracula. Yeah. And if you've ever seen the movie, um, uh, uh, what was it, Hearts of Darkness, the mm -hmm. documentary about the making of Apocalypse Now, mm -hmm. it's that. So when Martin Sheen, who's playing, I think, Harker, uh, do nearly dies, yeah. uh, the vampire technical advisor they have on the set revives him and turns him into a vampire. Oh my God. <laughs> and so it's it's just an amazing yeah. story. And it, it involves getting, I think, like three different sets of in-jokes to really appreciate it, which yeah. I guess makes it just an average Kim Newman story. It's like, okay, But it's, so it's very strong and great fun in, if you haven't read it. And then in, and then we come out making the original Dracula, but it's the original Dracula made in this year. Just mm -hmm. too many layers. Too many yep. layers. <laughs> it's so good. It's so nuts. So meta. <laughs> yeah, so before we went on that good Apocalypse Now segue, uh, which is not what I expected to happen. <laughs> uh, so as time goes on, uh, more despair tokens get added uh, until we've got three total. Uh, and right. then once all three have been laid out, every time Dracula moves... Um, the influence goes up. And is, uh, that's the uh, the dots at the right side of the board, right? The the red dots are those despair. Uh, so which ones in the? On the right there. Uh, is oh, that so not despair? These are the options that I have. As far oh, as well. these are options. All right. Yeah. Despair, I was hoping that they were um, big ruby blobs of despair. <laughs> the despair tokens get put on top of. Oh, on top uh, of the top clock. Here. Okay, I got you. Right. Once three despair tokens are in play, like we're in the proper end game at that point. Mm -hmm. like, right. At that point, the hunters have like a handful of turns at mm -hmm. least to take Dracula out. Because at that point, he is pretty much taken over Europe. Yep. So, in order to make sure that I can get my despair up, so at the moment, uh, Space Five has a aristocratic vampire lurking. Space Five's parents. So, if they don't discover that vampire in Paris um, within the next two turns, uh, that vampire is going to mature and advance the influence track by four. Oh, yeah, that'll be good. Yeah. So, all I need to do is that three times and then take out a hunter. And now at 13, I've won the game. Bob's your uncle. Yeah, exactly. Vampire. No. Dracula has then taken over. We're all good. All right. So, back to the decision that <laughs> mm -hmm. I decided to make. Am I going to Italy or am I going to Greece? You sound, you sound like you talked to yourself into going to Italy. I don't know if that was the right decision, but that was what you, you just seemed really into it. I think I will go to Italy. Let's, uh... Let's go down to Italy, make a little escape, and I'll put down a new vampire, uh, because then that's another vampire set up. If they mm. don't discover it, uh, I can influ uh, increase the influence track by three. Mm -hmm. So it's all about trying to make sure that you lay down these vampires in such a way that they're not likely to discover them. Right. making a beeline for Paris. That is not what I wanted to do. Yep. Uh-oh. Alright. So, they're in Paris, but if they don't search there, they won't discover my vampire. Unfortunately, Van Helsing has discovered that uh, I was in Milan just oh, that's not good. ago. So they are proper on to me. Maybe that'll draw them out of Paris, though. Possibly. Yeah, so you can see here on the uh, trail at the top. Yep, yep. Uh, you the can ones see that they've found. Which locations they've discovered. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, they have discovered my vampire. No! Oh. So my expert plan... Um, I was unfortunately failed with my vampire in Paris. However, uh, I believe...
believe this is my kind of my lamb. So they're going to get distracted uh, by this expertly placed hoax, um, which will delay them for a turn. So Van Helsing's arrived in Milan. He's hearing all, he's hearing all these rumours, all of half of which have been placed by Dracula to mislead him. It's like, look, I've got to sort through all this. I need to know actually what's gone on here. A situation I'm sure you can empathise with, trying to work out, okay, what actually happened, <laughs> what was real, what was not, how much of this has been planted by Dracula, or by British intelligence. Exactly. <laughs> well, it's like when he does the head fake in, in the novel, and they think he's going to Varna, but he goes to Galatz instead. Yeah, exactly. Like, Dracula is well known for saying, look, I'm going to go here. Just meet me there. You can sort of get out. Look, would I lie to you? I'm Dracula. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, they know that I was in Milan means they're thinking that I could either be, because you can see here we've got the all the different roads that uh, mm -hmm. you can take. Um, so the road to the red, the and the railways are white and... The dash lines. Yeah, the dash lines. Uh, so they're white and orange. Um, the funny thing is, Dracula can't use the railways. Uh, he can only use the roads. And when we were first looking at Fury of Dracula, we were like, okay, well, you know, this makes sense. Dracula's moving across here and hunters are trying to find him. And we were like, why can't Dracula use trains? And we were like, well, there must be a reason that Dracula can't use trains, right? Like, is he morally opposed to railways? Does he just not agree with trains? Uh, and someone pointed out that, actually, the hunters can only use trains during the day. They can't use trains at night. So our theory is that the trains are only running during the day. Right. So you can't take the like, night express. Yeah, exactly. Dracula's yeah. like, well, look, trains are great and all, but sort me out a night train, and then I'll, I might be interested. <laughs> My theory, if you want to know it, is that Dracula could use a train, but since he can only cross rivers at the flood or the neat tide... Oh. If the train runs across a river when Dracula can't go across it, he's just going <laughs> to out the back of the baggage car. <laughs> and that will attract attention. Yeah, I think uh, a man flying out the back of a train would be a bit of an eye-opener. <laughs> or a coffin, or a box of dirt, whatever yeah. dirt, whatever yeah, it is. That's true. So, so I mean, nice that's, that's my thesis, is that he just, you know, trains go over running water, so he can't cross the running water, except for at these very specific times. Mm -hmm. So we've just seen uh, Mina Harker take one of those trains uh, to from. Where did she go from? So she went from down in Missiles all the way up to Brussels. So thanks to train tickets, she can go along this route. Uh, and then all the way up to Brussels. So the hunters do have some ways to catch up with Dracula. Like, mm -hmm. the trains are quite a nice way to just cover a lot of good ground. Because um, they really need to, like, get on Dracula's trail. Yeah. Sadly, she's going literally the exact opposite of the direction she should be going, <laughs> but still. Well, it might be that they've decided to, you know, Van Helsing, he's... He's pretty good. He might be able to take out Dracula on his own. You never know. <laughs> I mean, yeah, he, he took out those brides. Yeah, ask uh, him. According to Van Helsing. According to Van Helsing. Like, All right, Mina, look, come on. I've, I've got this. You know, you know how good I am. <laughs> Mina, you just stay here and rest. I'm going to go deal with the three vampire women. <laughs> but you used the last of your... Uh, of your of your consecrated host to make the circle around me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. Well, guess I can't stop them from coming after me. <laughs> Too bad. So, what I was saying before about how um, if a location matures um, and manages to get past the sixth um, 
location and mm-hmm. the matured effect will take place. So like, if it's a vampire, um, the influence track will go up. So it looks like the reason that they're hanging out around um, the top of France is because they're figuring out, okay, this is where Dracula has been. If he's placed any vampires on there, we need to sort them out. Because, you know, it's all well and good just chasing after Dracula. But if he's leaving all these vampires in his wake, and we let them get away with it, like, that could also spell the end of the game for us. So, let's see if... Oh, they're all going up top. Nice. So it looks like Italy uh, was the right idea. Yeah. And all it cost was your Parisian vampire. <laughs> to get them all psychotically heading to Norway mm-hmm. or Holland. <laughs> all right. So, let's move you here. See what Van Helsing's up to. So he's grabbing some train tickets. Mina's grabbing some train tickets. Now it's back to my turn again. Okay. So, and again, you might tell me that this has some explanation within the Dracula law, because uh, I'm assuming you're much more of a law expert than me, but. In Fury of Dracula, Dracula can't go back on himself. Okay. So he can't go back to a location that's previously on the trail. So I've come from uh, Florence. And so Dracula now can't go back to Florence. Now is that just Dracula saying, look, I'm a trailblazer. I'm going where I'm going. No looking back, baby. (laughs) That's right. Love him and leave him. That's his way. Yeah, exactly. Like... Gameplay-wise, is a very good explanation. Yes, gameplay-wise, is it makes the game possible at all. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if Dracula could just keep going back and forth, uh, wouldn't make for a very exciting game. But no, it would not. I think Dracula not wanting to go back on himself. I'm not sure what reason there is for that. Yeah. Right. So they are now. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I can think is that, you know, and it's not even really very lorry, is that if he's gone through a city, he's probably bitten all the low-hanging blondes. It's true. And he it's doesn't true. want to have to go back and deal with all the recriminations and <laughs> screaming. He's like, look, it's, it's just too awkward if I have to go back. There'll be right. so many explanations that I can't be dealing with it. <laughs> You know, it's, and it's bad for the mystique when you, you show up in the girl's bedroom window and she's like, oh, you're bad. <laughs> Just not not something that Dracula wants to, it's not his scene, really. No. Like, All right, so, they've now figured out that I was in Zurich six turns ago, and then I was in Milan. So... I think they've narrowed down where I left uh, this area of Europe mm-hmm. because these locations so that's Genoa uh, and we've got Florence then Rome and then currently in Naples mm-hmm. so if they come down to Italy I've got two choices here. Uh, because Dracula can't go back on himself, I have right. to jump into the sea. That's the issue. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. I can't go back through Rome. Uh, well, I could go back to Rome, but then I can't go through Florence. So right. either I jump into uh, the sea on this side of Italy, or I jump into this side of Italy. If I go on this side, I can sort of go through the sea, land in Spain, or I could go all the way around to the UK. Now the issue here is uh, Dracula takes two damage uh, when he jumps into the sea. 
mm -hmm. every time he moves in the sea, and that's another damage to it. I've got 15 health, so it's not the worst thing ever, but that will add up. Like, there's a couple of ways that I can regain health, but not a lot. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so I really don't want to risk that too much. It seems, it seems like, I mean, the, the only downside to the very obvious thing of going to Bari and then hopping across into Albania mm -hmm. is that it's literally the most obvious move. Yeah. <laughs> and I guess the question is, you know, is the AI, does it, is it smart enough to do the obvious move or does it outsmart itself like human players can be made to do? Where you're like, oh no, Ken wouldn't do that. That would be too obvious. He must be in Corsica. Let's go chase him there. Right. Now, the downside here is that I'm not the one that programmed the AI. So <laughs> <laughs> if, you don't know I, how smart. If I knew such a thing, then I'd probably be able to like double smart the AI. So I think I'm going to go for the obvious one uh, and jump over to. At the very least, it costs you less health, which is, I think. Uh, a good yeah, idea. That's the main thing. Do it in itself. So I'm gonna go over to Barry. And then next turn I can jump into the sea. So I think I feel like I've been skipping through uh, placing down these encounter cards. Uh, but I think this is a good time to just talk through some of them, uh, some of the options that you have. Uh, so I've got two vampires that I can put down. We've already talked before about how these are the main way that Dracula can increase his influence. Uh, the hunters also have to fight the vampire if they find it. Um, so you do get a little bit of, you know, Dracula doesn't do all the fighting himself. He's more than happy to say, look, I want you to go mess up uh, Van Helsing and Lord Godalming and stay here until they get here. Well, they, they killed your Paris vampire though, right? Yes, they did. Uh, so unfortunately, they managed to take him out. Which is definitely unfortunate, but you know, Dracula's got more, many more vampires waiting in the wings. Or instead of placing down a vampire, uh, I can place down one of these other encounter cards, and some of them delay um, the hunters. Some of them have uh, like hopes. So any time a hunter discovers hopes, uh, they become delayed, so they can't move for a turn. No. Uh, if I put down some wolves, uh, they're going to attack the hunters for four damage. Uh, each hunter has a different amount of health. Um, I think Lord Godalming has the most out of all of them. Um, but if any of the hunters go down to zero, it doesn't have to be that Dracula took them out personally. Uh, if he manages to take them out through other means, and my influence still goes up. Right. So, they've now moved to another location and put an encounter card. So, Hunter reveals all their item and cards and discards all of their tickets. I'll get rid of the tickets with that one. Really, you know, the fact that the Italian trains are screwed up, you probably didn't need to leave a spy to do that. <laughs> right. So the issue here that I've got is that they're very much on my trail at the moment. And mm -hmm. like I said, my main way of influence is maturing those vampires that I've put down. And if they're hot on my trail, that makes it really hard to do that. But that's where the benefit comes in of having uh, these despair tokens. Uh, so you can see hovering over here, uh, there's three despair tokens total. And once that third one gets put down, um, then the uh, influence goes up every time I move. So yep. you, you can see it like coming in over the mm -hmm. timer. Yep, yep. Uh, so, if I evade for a little bit more, um, I should be okay. So, but now, I can decide where to go. I think I'm going to make a land in Slovenia. Well, playing, playing this game uh, has made me realise how many places in Europe I can't pronounce. <laughs> <laughs> Down another new vampire. 
can see. So now uh, the hunters can see. All right, he was on sea for two turns, and now he's back on land. Right. Well, if we're all very lucky, they'll think you. No, but they know you went on land first. They're not going to think that. So I was going to say they might think you left Genoa and uh, headed around to Spain or back up into France. Yeah, because you nope. can work out, all right, how many turns mm-hmm. could he have uh, possibly spent on the sea? Where could that have led him to? So, they've just resolved a... Realize when I lean forward to look at the uh, at the screen, um, uh, suddenly my chin drops to the bottom of the thing. <laughs> very, very entertaining. Four of them, they certainly can afford to send one of them to Barry to check it out. Yeah, exactly. This is the issue because they're so hot on my trail, but they're all together. Like, it's mm-hmm. so hard for me to split up them. Well, if Gadalming hadn't run away like a big jerk. <laughs> well, that's the thing. If I manage to kill them, uh, that still puts my influence up. Mm-hmm. So that uh, new vampire that I've got sitting in Bali uh, is John Stewart he's on five well Godalming was down to five when he fled does he yeah. heal back uh, so you can uh, the hunters can rest and um, so they can skip a turn uh, in order to get health back so yeah it's kind of a balancing act because obviously the turns that you're spent sitting there recuperating uh, you're not actively hunting Dracula right as well, uh, but in the final game we'll have like multiple difficulty levels, uh, so I think I'm going to give myself some props and say I'm playing against hunters that are on like the hardest difficulty at the moment Yes, there you go Yeah, It's the hardest, <laughs> it, it was really it became too hard and I could beat them easily, but mm-hmm. other players oh, oh, I don't, we, we've oh, added yeah. a simpler one now exactly. <laughs> yeah. Kind of an alpha gamer, really Suez jumped in the sea. Huh? No, so you have so much to live for, John Seward. <laughs> it's a lie. He doesn't have anything to live for. All three of them are getting in the sea. It's exciting. They think I've gone. So did they? They went to Barry, though. Did they search in Barry and find uh, the vampire you hid there? Uh, yes, they did. Oh, and that's who they were fighting was the top hat vampire was from yeah, Barry. That's the one. But he's still there, right? They didn't kill him. Uh no, they killed him. Oh, did they? Yeah, once once they leave the combat, uh he's then gone. So they've sent Gadalming uh up here after me. While those lot have gone to the sea, are they trying to cut me off here? I don't think it's fair if they can win by escaping. That's true. 
on, you know. You gotta, you gotta I guess the theory is they just came back at daytime and opened up the doors. <laughs> They're like, hang on, we can just wait. These vampires, who said these vampires are hard to fight? All right. All right. But we've now hit the point uh, that I was hoping for. So see how the uh, time count now looks mm-hmm. uh, mighty upset with everyone? Mm-hmm. Uh, that's because my three despair tokens uh, are now placed on there. So the hunters mm-hmm. weren't able yeah. to get me quick enough. Uh, so now, every single time I move, this despair, um, the influence, sorry, uh, goes up by three. So now... By three? Yeah. Oh, wow, this, that's a lot. This is proper end game now. Yeah. Every move you make, every breath you take. Mm-hmm. But jokes on them, you take no breaths. No <laughs> Oh, so they're still going to the Ionian Sea. So that might be why they've jumped in here. Because otherwise they'd have to go to Barry, right. the Adric Sea, and then the Ionian Sea. So it actually works out a little bit quicker. Not that it'll help them much, because uh, I'm currently in Munich. Munich! That's where I am. Yeah, I'm in Munich. Uh, and I only need to take handful of steps and then victory will be mine mm-hmm. I mean they managed to get on my trail pretty close but you know when you're playing against an expert Dracula player there's only something like yourself play. exactly <laughs> poor computers just overmastered exactly so that's gonna be out put down it's the it's the deep blue of Fury of Dracula yeah. AIs and it's not it's not capable of overcoming All right. your so native cutting. I'm now on 10, so my next move right. is victory. And they're all dinking around at the bottom of the yeah, Peloponnesus. Yeah, I think they're all like, look, vampire's taken over. We'll just hang out in the sea. <laughs> <laughs> let's, they can't kill us here! Let's just abandon... Look. Africa sounds great around that now. Right, yeah. Let's, <laughs> let's just lead Europe. <laughs> Go to Tunisia. There's no map there. Exactly. He can't find us. random stats <laughs> from a young player this season so that's Fury of Dracula uh, so you can play as the Hunters uh, but that would mean playing as Dracula uh, so what do you think? look great look yeah. very much like the, it, it, it gave me the Jones to pull out Fury of Dracula and play it on my kitchen table <laughs> except that since my wife is working from home I can't do that because all of her stuff is on it. Oh, God, yeah. I'm, I'm currently recording this from my uh, 
home office at the yes. moment, so I definitely feel you. <laughs> I mean, my home office has always been a home office. There's nothing new here. It's just that yeah. my, my poor wife can't go in to work, yeah. so. <laughs> Board gaming is off the table, literally. Yep, and there's a lot more stuff on the table. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so we, we've uh, tried to make it as uh, accurate to the uh, original board game as possible, uh, keep that original feel uh, while also streamlining a couple of things. So, yeah. yeah. Glad you like it. No, it looked amazing. And okay, awesome. great fun with the with the uh, animation. That it was, uh, I think, in that sweet spot of just can't be enough mm -hmm. to be, you know, uh, fun, but also it's it's got a, a little groove. And yeah, I, like my personal aesthetic for Dracula obviously is Hammer. Uh, yeah. So I feel like you you're in that sweet Hammer spot. Yeah, we of, definitely of, take some influence from the uh, Hammer, like the film grain effects and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah. Right. This game was originally made, I think it was like 19, it was like the late 80s. Yeah, 87 or something like that. It came out. Yeah. So we know that like old school fans of Dracula, Fury of Dracula, they're definitely in that sort of era. Mm -hmm. um, so the more that we can lean into that like Dracula, Hammer Horror nostalgia, uh, the better, really. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, like I, so, yeah, you just uh, you know get those random stats fixed and uh, add some armadillos, and this thing's ready to ship. Yeah. So um, I don't know when this is going to be uh, going out because uh, this is like a previous uh, in development build. Uh, mm -hmm. But like I said, we've got our team, uh, our tiny little team here in the UK, uh, cracking on uh, to polish this up. Um, um, we've got the core there. Uh, it's just tiny little things that we still need to. Still got the uh, tutorial um, because there's quite a lot of different mechanics. Um, yeah, it's the benefit a little of bit of a the cognitive load. Digital tutorial over the physical tutorial. Like, mm -hmm. if you just sit there and flick through a pamphlet, like it's like, okay, well, I get it, but I won't fully get it until I play, right? Right. Whereas with the digital one, we can say, okay, well, we'll actually set up the game for you, mm -hmm. play through these steps, like, and it'll be really good for people. That yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so we've been chatting now for nearly two hours. Uh, <laughs> so I think I'm going to start closing it down now. Uh, but thanks very much, Ken, for uh, jumping on and chatting nonsense about Dracula. Uh, oh, no. For thanks for having me. Um, if there's anything you want to give a shout out to uh, or plug um, before we close, uh, feel free. Um, I have a podcast with Robin D. Laws, my fellow beloved game designer, uh, called Ken and Robin Talk About Stuff, and you can find it wherever you find podcasts or on KenAndRobinTalkAboutStuff.com. Cool. Drops every Friday. Uh, I'm at Kenneth Height on the Twitters, so feel free to follow me and hang on my every social media utterance. <laughs> uh, and uh, if you haven't played Knights Black Agents or Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition, I recommend you play one or the other or both. Sounds Play good. one and kill the other one with it, whichever you like. <laughs> awesome. Uh, sweet. So thanks very much, Ken. Um, oh, thanks very much, man. If anyone wants to check out Fury of Dracula, uh, it's the Steam page is up, uh, so you can go wishlist it, check out the trailer. Um, we put an awesome trailer together, um, and we've got loads of information about, on there about the game, uh, Add it to your wish list. That helps us out a lot because Steam add it to the add really, it to your wish list. Yeah, I, I get really, it. really likes uh, people when they add it to their wish list. Like, really helps the algorithm uh, for a small studio like us. Like, really, really helps. Uh, you can also follow us on social media. Uh, you can we're on no at Nomad Games on Twitter, um, Instagram. Facebook, we've got Discord, uh, if you head to nomadgames.co.uk, pretty much everything's on there, so check that out, and thanks for tuning into the stream, really appreciate it, alright, 